Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22 on uh, the Silver Run Forest map. I am an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we got a lot to do. A lot to do. Okay, so where to begin? First of all, uh, I did one more um, uh, container sale with two six-meter containers. Here's the money from that. Okay, so that brings us up to $202,919. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we are going to send the gator down to the store. And I have uh, I have a few new mods that will that we'll go over. One of those is a fuel tank that you can put on, oh, I guess our forklift is stuck on a bridge there. Uh, a fuel tank that you can put on the back of the gator, a mobile fuel tank, which we need because we're starting to... Probably what happened there is the forks got stuck. Okay, so you head back to the store. Okay. Uh, that we can put on the back of the gator uh, to fuel because we're starting to get low on fuel in some of our vehicles. All right, I also want you... Actually, I need to change the corner speed on this, so... Apply, and I want you to go to the store as well. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, let's see. Let's talk about mods. I have installed the uh, a mod that lets us do firewood. Because if you remember, I was talking about that uh, an episode or two back. And, and I was saying, Stu, we can't do firewood. Well, we actually can. Um, thanks to this mod. So basically, there is a firewood processing, uh, firewood processor right here. And um, so what we're, what the plan here is, we're going to start using this to process our scrap wood and turn it into firewood. <coughs> excuse me, and sell it as firewood, uh, which is really cool. However, I do want to also, <coughs> excuse me, do some some chipping as well. Um, so I think we'll we'll go ahead and use the wood chipper. The for, for the first batch to get rid of this um, first batch of wood that we have here. Just for fun, just for the heck of it. Um, but I think the firewood is going to be more profitable for us because it also has a sell point that we can set and sell the firewood to. So I'll have to figure out, you know, how I'm going to work that one out, but we'll we'll get there. Uh, okay, so let's see. What else do we have? Um, oh, I want to talk about this. Okay, so this guy... I had to repair this. It was completely and utterly broken. Well, out, out of durability, I guess. It cost me over $30,000, you guys, to repair this machine. And I'm like going, are you kidding me? <laughs> $30,000. So that means after we, we've repaired this 10 times, we've put $300,000 into repairing this thing, which is comparable to the cost of a, of a new one so we're going to change the, we're going to do something different is basically what i'm trying to say here so what we're going to do is we're going to sell this we're going to take it down the shop fix it up paint it sell it and we'll get a decent amount of money from doing that and then we're going to turn around and we're going to purchase a new brand new harvest not lease to own but purchase and there's a reason for that and the and i'll tell you what that reason is Another thing I did is I installed a mod that lets me landscape for free. Now, don't freak out. Uh, those of you guys who watch me on a regular basis know I'm not going to do cheaty stuff. Uh, if we do landscaping that should be paid for, we are going to pay for it. Okay? But I got to thinking. We spent an enormous amount of money by virtue of the fact that every single one of these little dinky plants we placed... Uh, I think on the last episode was a hundred bucks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and so, and I got to thinking, you know what? In the real world, all of this vegetation is going to regrow naturally. I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to replant shrubs and brush and, you know, that sort of thing on forest land. You're going to replant the trees, of course, and that's going to cost something. And, and it, we will do that. We'll pay for it. 
But this stuff's going to just be, you know, come up naturally. So it was ridiculous that I paid for it. So there are certain types of landscaping things, and that's a prime example that I don't think I should pay for, and I'm not going to. But if we're doing something like, say, some massive terrain editing, where in the real world you'd have to call in an excavation company, you know, to move to move earth or bulldozers and that kind of thing, we will pay for that, and I'll just pull it out of the um, out of the the easy easy development tools, you know, the F10 menu basically, and I'll just deduct however much money I think is fair for us to do that. Okay. Um, so yeah. And now that we have established that, uh, let's go into landscaping and back to painting. Um, I, I tried to find a mod that, that gives us extra textures, but I wasn't really successful in doing that. Uh, I'd like more, you know, of these, these textures here, but unfortunately I didn't really find anything, but let's do this. Let's grab, I think it was Yeah, let's just put in a little bit more vegetation here. And, you know, this is, if you look at my money, you can see that it's not cost me anything to do this. And it shouldn't, again, because this stuff is just going to grow back naturally. And we shouldn't have to pay for it. Okay. Maybe do a couple squirts over there, too. And... Oh. No, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> What are these plants? Here, let's reduce the size of this. Okay. The, these plants that I just put down, these, these guys seem... Uh, I like those the most. They, they look good and are kind of what you might expect to find on the forest floor in the Cascade, well, in the eastern Cascade Mountains anyways. There was also, yeah, there's also some ferns. Could put a few of those in too, just for funsies. We'll just put them in at random, just like nature would do. Okay, that's good. Let's just go with that. Um, as far as the gravel goes, we have been busting up you know, these stones, and we have a big old pile of stone that I've been dumping way over there. So we could really say that that's what's paying for, you know, uh, the gravel that we put down on our road. Anyway, uh, like I said, I, I will I will not take advantage of that according to my own sensibilities when it comes to what I think should be paid for and what I think should not, and um, we'll go from there. So... All right, enough said about that. Now, let's see. We got it. Let's get the Mac. Now, I I tentatively plan on doing some yarding in this episode, but if we can get to it. If not, then we'll do it in the next episode. But one thing that we have or that I have done is I have All right, why can't I? There we go. I've logged out everything on this side of the road except for a few dead trees. So there's no more harvestable timber uh, on this side of the road. I do, like I said, I have a little bit of cleanup work to do. I have a, a little more stump grinding and dead trees to get out of the way, that sort of thing. But uh, we, we've pretty much logged out everything on that side. Any trees that you see that way, I can't get to because they're beyond the border. So the plan is that we're going to set our yarder up up here and we're going to log the trees kind of along the pond there going that direction. And that's why I have the trailer up here. And incidentally, I don't know if I mentioned this to you or not, but we're going to go ahead and try a 9-meter trailer, which is, uh, I'm sorry, container. I keep calling it a trailer. It's a container. Uh, we're going to try the 9-meter container this time just to try it because I haven't yet and see what the pricing's like on that and how it's like cutting the wood. And then after we do that, we'll kind of have a better idea of which one's the best. I, I, think, I still think probably two 6-meter containers is the best way to go, but we'll see. Okay, so let's get over here to our low boy. And we're going to take the Komatsu down to the store and get it fixed up and sold. And then we're going to buy a brand new machine. I'm not going to tell you what it is until we get there. That way I'll 
keep you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> and I'm going to talk a little bit too about why we're going to get what we're going to get and you know why I came to that particular decision. Uh, we're gonna. Looks like we need to pull this out just a little bit. Okay. Now let's do. No, not that. Why isn't it doing the side thing? Oh, so I think I have to have this out first. There we go. Okay. And we want these to be nice and wide here. Probably right about there. Okay, let's go ahead and load up the heart, the Komatsu. Oh, you know what? I want I want you down at the store too. One other thing real quick here. You always want to slow these guys down on the corners. Okay, let's just teleport back up here. My my general rule is I use teleporting when I'm working with the AI. Uh, I think I if you didn't see the very first episode, I kind of explained that. When I set rules like that for myself, I <clears throat> I would and I, I call them general rules, and the reason for it is I don't hold myself to those a hundred percent of the time. What's most important for me is to have fun playing this game. And sometimes, sometimes if I don't want to hassle with trying to follow some strict rule, then I'm not going to do it. But for the most part, I will. And that's just kind of my MO. Okay, so let's turn that off. I like to, when I play this game, I like, I like to be moderately realistic. Okay, that's that's the best way to describe it. I'm not hardcore strict about it, uh, but I'm, I'm not also not going to sit there and load an entire container of you know two ton logs by hand either, you know, kind of thing. So that's the way it works for me. How come I can't? Oh, okay. I was going to say, why can't I get the straps on? I guess you have to look at the original bed and not at the extension. That's what's going on here. Let's strap this down too. We'll just pretend like that's strapped down. All right, let's head on down to the store. I did also find um, a larger force, uh, forestry mulcher too on the mod hub. So we're gonna get that. Let's get uh oh yeah let's get you guys out of here so you're not charging me for just sitting there doing nothing okay so let's unstrap the komatsu and Jump up inside and take it off the platform. Oh, I guess I need to get the ramps down, don't I? Alrighty, here we go. Uh, so we currently have $202,538. Uh, we're going to repair this for another $918,000. It's going to cost us a whopping $74,400 to paint. Um, why does that say this is only one month old when it's got 157 hours on it? I don't know. I don't understand that. Um, I guess it's worth it to do this. It, it usually is. If we sell it for... Okay, right now if we just sell it outright... I'm just going to double check this because that is a huge amount of money. 
Um, okay, so 161, 748. Plus 75, 4,400 equals 237,148. So we should be able to sell this for at least that much after repainting it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So so it was 237,148. We're actually selling it for 244. So yeah, we got we we actually made about seven thousand dollars on that deal ish. Good deal. Okay, so let's sell this, and that brings us up to three hundred seventy thousand nine hundred and eight dollar Mikihala. All right, very good, very very good. Now, here's what's gonna happen here, guys. I'm gonna do a quick save here just in case I screw something up, because we're th this is big money we're working with here. I have done some thinking about what I want to do. I really like the dedicated forestry harvesters, the forestry machines. The reason I like them is because for three reasons, okay? They can, and th this one I think is the, is the best all-around one in the game. They go 12 miles an hour. They cut the tree, they skid the tree, they haul the tree back to the landing, they delimb the tree, and they cut it into lengths. I mean, it does all of that stuff. This type of harvester, all this does is cut the tree. And yeah, you can cut a couple of trees, but then you have to haul them back. You have to still delimb them, and you have to still cut them into lengths in a different step. Um, so I just really don't even see the point in this if you are comparing it with this. Okay, now this definitely is useful if you didn't have access to a forestry harvester, but we do. This is supposedly the best forestry harvester in the game, and it is by virtue of the fact that it can cut up to 120 centimeters. But look how look at the speed on this thing. <laughs> it goes four miles an hour. That's nuts. So if you have to travel any any distance, it's going to take forever. Not to mention the fact that it's three quarters of a million dollars. Yowzers. Okay. But what I'm going to do is we're going to buy this. And the reason we're going to buy this is because of its versatility. It can do 81 centimeter logs. It only goes six miles per hour, which isn't very good either, but it's a little bit better than four. But the thing that's nice about this machine, if you don't already know, is it's extremely versatile. You can attach a harvester head. You can attach a grapple to it. You can attach a uh, the cedar to it. You can attach a feller buncher. You can attach um, something else that I can't think of off the top of my head to this. So it's extremely versatile. Um, and because of that reason, we are going to uh, purchase this. Now, why am I purchasing this? instead of leasing it and why am i getting this one instead of this one i'm getting this one instead of this one because we're going to go big or go home it's got more horsepower and it can do larger logs and we're just going to get it and then we're going to have it forever okay secondly um the uh oh if if we lease it we can't reconfigure it okay and that's the pr problem i ran into with the Volta tractor is i leased it and then i went to try and change the rim color, and I couldn't do it because it's a leased vehicle. If I had that to do over again, I would have, I would have, you know, outright bought that too. But we want to be able to reconfigure this because that's the only way we're going to be able to change the head on it. Okay, it's going to use almost all of our money, but I'm not worried about that. You guys have seen how much money we can make in this game, um, and so yeah, that's just not a big deal. We're probably going to have to take out a little bit of a loan for a very short period of time. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, actually, you know what? We're going to pro we're going to have to take out a loan now because the harvester head. I wonder why that that's orange instead of yellow, like the same color. I don't know. Uh, that's actually going to cost more money than we have. So let's let's just go ahead and borrow uh, some money from the bank. 
and I think I'm just going to borrow a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Cause we, we're going to need extra money besides just the money we need to get this thing. Um, now I will tell you this, if this guy comes on sale, um, I still might, I still might get this cause I really, really like these harvester machines. Um, but, uh, or later on down the road when we're rolling in dough, I might just outright buy a new one. There's something to be said for buying new because as you guys probably know, if you buy the used stuff, then you have to repair it more and boy, that's expensive to repair that stuff. Um, okay. So anyway, I hope all that makes sense. Um, uh, but so we're going to buy this. We're going to get it with the, um, the harvester head, but we're also going to get the grappler, uh, extension too. And then later on we can put the fast coupler on cause we need the fast coupler for some of that other stuff that I mentioned. Okay. A beacon. Do we want a beacon? Sure. Why not? We're going to go big. We're going to go home standard windows or tinted windows. Obviously we want tinted windows. Totally want tinted windows, right? And there we go. Let's buy it. And there she is. Fantastic. Look at this harvester head, man. It's a monster. And this is going to allow us to cut down those big spruce trees that we weren't able to do with the Komatsu. So another huge plus there. Okay, so... um. I want to look at something here really quick. So let's get in. Look at this machine. I think my head tracker's... No, it's it's okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's acting a little weird. Anyway. Um, now, this is a skid steering vehicle. So, but it seems like it has a little more it's a little more forgiving than the skid steer I don't know but I might still end up just using the the keyboard uh, to control it because it just seems to be easier with these types of vehicles okay let's pop out of here for a second and look in here and go to customize so we can change, okay, why is it that we can change out the grapple and we don't have to pay that $10,000 for it? Maybe the 10000 was for the grapple and then the 30 some odd thousand for the harvester head was just 20 more some odd thousand on top of the 10. That's the only thing I can think of. Because see, it's not going to charge us for the, for the cup, fast coupler or for the grapple, which is fine. I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to figure out why it's working that way. And we should be able to change these out up at the property using the toolbox. Even though that's not really very practical for something this big, but yeah. Okay. So we got ourselves a brand new Volvo EC380DL excavator, all purpose machine here. Make those just a little wider. There we go. Strap it down. Yeah, I can't I can't get in there to manually strap it, so we're just gonna do it this way. Okay. Good. Okay, so before we leave the store, we're gonna do a few more things too. Let's grab the gator here. And I think I mentioned to you guys that I, I purchased a, a mobile fuel tank that will fit on the back of the Gator. And we're going to use that as our remote fueling solution to start with, but we're probably going to have to do something a little more elaborate as our operation grows. But we'll start with this. Uh, so we want to go here, and I th think we want to go to miscellaneous. Yes. 
So it's this Lizard mobile fuel tank. It holds 525 liters of diesel. Uh, we're just going to buy it. And we can pick it up. Well, at least when it's empty. And it should fit right in the back of the gator. And slide it over just a little bit. There we go. And we'll strap it down. Whoops. Okay, let's take this over to the fueling station and fill it up with diesel. And then we'll send it back to the ranch. Did I set the cornering speed on this? I did, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Yeah, because some of our machines are starting to get low on fuel. And it's not practical to always bring them into town to refuel them. Oh, you know what else we're going to do? We're going to try the marking spray. I don't think this functionally does anything. It's just kind of for fun. Uh, but let's try it. And uh, I might actually find a use for it. It's ex incredibly expensive. I can't. Can you imagine paying hundred dollars for a can of spray paint? Uh, but it is what it is. I I don't know if it runs out. If it if it lasts forever, then you know that makes it more worth it. But now we have spray paint that we can mark trees with different symbols meaning different things. Okay, so this is full with five hundred twenty five liters of fuel, and it looks like it also filled up the gator for us, which is great. I want to get you. Uh, going back up to the property here. So just go back to the logging camp. Nice. Okay. And then uh, the last thing we're going to do at the store is we're going to turn in this forestry mulcher and get... Uh, well, no. Second to the last thing. Uh, we're going to get the bigger one. And we're going to grab the small tractor-mounted yarder. I want to try that first. But it is my intention eventually to go to the big one. But let's try the small one first, just so we can say we did, right? Okay, so... Let's go here. Repair, repaint, and sell. While we're here, we might as well repair the Vulture, too. Okay, so let's back up to here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into forestry equipment and we're going to buy this guy right here. Okay. So, yeah, this is a, a, a three and a half meter forestry mulcher and it's also supposed to be able to grind stones too. So we'll have to see how that works. It comes with this roller. And I'm not sure if the roller actually does anything in the game. In the real life, of course, it would just, you know, smooth out the ground and whatnot. But um, it's only another $1,000, so let's just get it. But I'm going to lease this for now. And we can do, the, you know, the lease to own option later just because it's pretty darned expensive. And that way I want to see if I like it, too. I mean, we might not like it, so that way I can return it. Okay. This will have the added benefit of also acting as a counterweight for the front of our tractor. And it's actually pretty heavy, too. You, you can kind of, if you just look at the tractor when we lift that up, it is putting some weight on the front end for sure, which is a good thing. All right, now, last but not least, let's also lease the tractor mounted yarder. That's not going to be that expensive. We'll try this out, and then later on we'll get the big guy. And having the forestry mulcher on the front will help with this, too, because, again, the counterweight and all that. Even though the yarder actually anchors itself once it's in set up. Cool. Okay, looks like everything is up.
just in case something crazy happens, I'm going to do another quick save. And then we're going to send you up to the logging camp. Oh, that's cool. It actually folds down like that. Neat. Why are you going that way? You're just going to go for like a the scenic route? Is that what the deal is? Boy, I don't know. Okay. Hopefully it'll make it up there. I'm driving this, man. I'm not trusting this thing to the AI. <laughs> this is an incredibly expensive piece of machinery. We're driving it ourselves. All right. Let's go. Let's go home. Try out some of these new toys we got. Oh! Wow, okay. I didn't think that would have done that with it being strapped down like it is. I guess we're gonna have to really be careful when we're hauling this thing around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can, <laughs> can we? I'm trying to get it back up. There we go. Okay. Whew. Don't do that to me, game. Freak me out, man. Looks like our tractor's stuck on a bridge over there. At least he made it up here, though. Let's go get him fixed first because he's sitting there being stupid and charging us money to be stupid. Alright, so uh, the plan for the yarder. I've never done this before, so I know I know how to do it, more or less, but what I'm I'm not experienced in is the best way to do it. So we'll have to kind of just figure that out. We're gonna do some OJT here. But I think we want to maybe come across this way. We can't get too far up that way because the border of the map is just right a little ways past the end of the, our road. So I'm thinking line it up this way and maybe pull the logs to somewhere around here. Um, let's uh, turn this on. No, not that. This. Look at that, you guys. It's not tearing up the ground. I love it. All right, what happens if we put the roller down? This is great. Oh, okay, so very cool. So the roller, it will create the torn up ground, which you might want to do, you know, like when you're building a road. This is really clever. I love it. And it's, you know, it's it's a lot wider than the other one, too. Fantastic. Okay, let's let's actually test this out on a stone really quick, because it's supposed to it's supposed to take out stones. And I've got a couple stumps and things over here I need to get anyway, so. This is great. I, I didn't know that it would not tear up the ground. Okay, 
got rid of that stump. All right, let's see what it does with this stone. Hmm. I wonder if it means field stones, that it grinds field stones. Because it's not doing anything to this stone. I'll bet you that's what it means, field stones. Okay. Fair enough. There's a stump. Hmm, why isn't it getting that stump? Do I need to come over this way more? Yeah, there we go, okay. Oh, we should test it on um, on a tree. It should just absolutely annihilate this little tree here. Yep. <laughs> what about the dead tree? Think about it, that stump. We have to raise it up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, it'll certainly take it down. I don't know if it'll chew it up, though. It's a pretty big tree. Let's get rid of all these little chunks of wood here. I can also just delete those with the chainsaw. There we go. Alright, I want to try... Um, I want to see if we can actually eat this dead tree. Just because, I mean, you know, maybe this won't apply to the firewood mod, and I hope it doesn't. Because, uh, you know, like I mentioned, dead trees are actually great for firewood as long as they're not rotten. Um, oh, wow. It did destroy that tree. Okay, that's a good thing. Because if it turns out that the dead trees suck for firewood, too, then we can just use this to annihilate them. <laughs> I really like this tool, you guys. This is amazing. I just got it off a of mod hub if anybody else is interested in it. Uh, what's it called again? It's the, yeah, it's the Seppi M Maxi Soil 350. For anybody that's interested. Just love the fact that it doesn't tear up the ground, though. I know that's somewhat unrealistic, though, but it's just going to make things look nicer. I mean, you. If you were on relatively flat ground, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that dogwood tree there. So you could make an argument that it would, uh, you know, if you just keep it a little bit off the ground, it's not gonna tear the soil up. But that would be pretty difficult to do in a forest environment where the terrain is anything but even, right? Let's go eat this tree here. Well, actually, can I get to this tree? It's gone. I think I'm yeah, I think I'm at the the wall. Oh no, there's a stump there. Not anymore. Yeah, the wall is like right here. Yeah, see I just ran into it. And it goes up along this way. Alright, let's eat these two deadwood trees. I think we have to get at a better angle. Uh, I also want to get these rid of the, rid of these stumps too. If we come at it from the end, that's what we did last time when it completely annihilated it. Here, let's get some lights on.
Yeah, it's just pushing it. What if we get... Okay, there we go. If we get over the hill... Okay. Well, yeah, it's it's a positioning thing. What about if we try this one here? We'll come at it straight on. Yeah, it's just pushing it. Okay. Well, we'll just pick these up and use it. Use them. We'll ch well, we'll chip them for the first time, and then we'll use them for firewood later. Okay, let's get rid of these other stumps, and then we'll get the yarder set up here. All right, I think I figured it out. That it's actually coming off the left. I assumed it was coming off the back, but it's actually coming off the left. So we need to turn the tractor at a right angle this way. Okay, that should work. Let's try this. I just I just assumed that it came out the back, but it doesn't. It comes off the side. Okay. We should be in business now. There we go. All right, let's see how far this direction we can take it. Wow, that thing will go a long ways. Um, okay. Why don't we put it more up this direction and then we can move it down into that part of the forest later. Something blocks Okay, yeah, it's the it's the border probably that's doing that. Okay, so it'll go there. That's cool. Okay. Now, um, if we press F1, can we move the carriage? Do we have to have the tractor on? Oh, we can. Okay, so yeah, look at the little graphic uh, on the left-hand side. It shows us the carriage coming towards us, and we should be able to see it here pretty soon. In fact, I can see it right now. Probably in real life, you'd have some kind of a remote control LCD display kind of thing you'd carry around to control something like this. That is neat, man. Look at that, you guys. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's start with... Let's actually start with this big lodgepole here. And we're going to want to... How do we change the marking on this? There's a way that we can change the paint can to a different marking. I can't remember what it is, so well, we'll figure that out later. Anyway, we've marked the tree. <laughs> okay. Um, so we want to fell the tree that direction. Well, except for I can't see what I'm doing here. Timber. Nice. Okay, so now what we do is we move the carriage back this way. And then enable carriage follow mode. Really? So it just follows me? Oh, look at that! Oh man, I love this! <laughs> this is this is the best expansion ever, you guys. I am just thoroughly enjoying myself playing this, this expansion. It's, it's wonderful. Okay, anyway, let's disable that. Now, how do I get the cable? Do I just press R? Oh uh, no, that's the follow. Okay. Move carriage, enable carriage, follow, move carriage to yarder. Oh, so we'd have to have a yarder out to do it. Okay, so how do I pull the cable down from this? Do I look at it? Normally you would press R, but that puts it in follow mode. Uh, 
do I just look at the log? Oh, yeah, we just look at the log. Okay. The tree is too heavy to be attached. Oh, no! <laughs> okay, you know what we can do, then, is we'll cut it. And we're doing 9 meter lengths this time. Okay, yeah, so let's let's go ahead and do a, an alt right click and we'll go 9 meters. Right about there. And then we'll go 18 meters. And then 27 meters. Oh, I should have delimbed this thing first. Well, that's right. I don't think we're going to get another 9 meters off of this. Almost, yeah. Okay, so that'll go to the scrap pile. Now, I know we can yard multiple logs at once, but since we're using the small one, I'm not sure how many we can do. If we look at this, does it tell us? Yeah, it says 1.4 tons. How much is this next one? 1.2 tons. What is the limit on this yarder? Least items, forestry equipment. It's 1.5 tons. Okay, yeah, so we're not going to be able to do more than just this one. Okay, so let's attach that. And then to send it home, I guess we just press K, right? Move carriage to yarder. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, move carriage to yarder, duh. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that straight. And it just takes the log on over there, right across the water and everything. Fantastic. I love this, you guys. Okay. Um, to disconnect, to detach tree V. Okay, let's put this in follow old guy mode. And let's go get the other logs over here. It's not as fast as me, but it's coming along at a pretty decent clip. Uh, where's that tree at? It's over here. Okay, and then... You know, the thing, too, is disable follow mode and return to Yarder. We don't we don't even have to go um, all the way back there. We just stay out here and just call it back and keep picking up the logs until we have all the logs picked up. That is so neat, man. So I, I'm assuming in real life yarders to today anyways work very similarly and they're probably wirelessly controlled or something. Well, I mean they would have to be to work like this. Okay. How do we know when it gets back? I guess we'll Okay, detached tree. Okay. Move carriage to last position. We can either do, either do that or just have it do follow mode. Let's just have it do follow mode. Here it comes. I guess the arrow that we see flashing on the left-hand side, that blue arrow that's pointing down in the animation there, that's probably what the last position was, I'm guessing. Maybe? can even hear like the little motor running okay it's 
it seems to have, you know, pretty decent range away from the cable, too. I wonder if we're going to crash into this tree, and when we do, what's going to happen there? Oh, no, it pulled it over to the cable. Gotcha. Okay. And then this was just the, the junk piece, which is... Well, it actually would make a nice 6-meter piece. So we'll, we'll yard that back and we'll put it in the 6-meter pile. Okay. Oh, I, I, duh. I know how it gets back. Just look at the animation and when it's all the way to the left, it's there. Okay. Uh, so detach the tree. It even shows it doing that. And now let's tell it to move to last position, which is Y. And here... Oh no, the last position is on the cable. So what's the what's the blue arrow down on the ground mean then? Oh, that's me. Oh, okay. That's me moving. Gotcha. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, we're going to have to probably move it further this way though. So let's set it to follow me. All right, so can we reach all the way over here? It's a little far away. Yeah, it's a little too far away. I think as soon as the thing on the... in the, you know, the little window disappears, that's the maximum limit we can go. All right, we'll have to come and pick this up later then. Is there a, a way... There's probably not a way I can reposition the cable without having to go all the way back to the yard, or it would be my guess. Okay. Yeah, that'd be my guess. All right, well, um... I think what we're going to do here, guys, is I'm going to wrap up this episode. We probably went way too long, but this sure was a fun episode. I really enjoyed myself. Hope you guys did, too. Uh, so we're going to wrap up this episode here, and I'm going to log those trees up there um, just with the harvester. There's no point in actually using the yarder. I'm going to load those into the trailer here. Um, I might. We should probably pull this back down onto the flat ground, too. And once I get everything on this side of the pond that I can get to cut down and logged uh, or cut down cut and loaded and I'm ready to go back to that side of the pond I'll bring you guys back at that point we'll start the next episode and uh, continue on here so guys I hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and we'll catch you in the next episode bye bye